Hi, my name is Brianna, and welcome to my reaction commentary channel. Today we're going to be reacting to season 1, episode 1 of Good Omens. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know the who, the what, the when, the where, or the why when it comes to this show. I've gone so far to avoid spoilers that I pretty much don't even know what the show is about. I do know that it stars Michael Sheen and David Tennant. I know Michael Sheen from The Prodigal Son. He played a very Hannibal Lecter-esque character in that show. And I know David Tennant as one of the many Doctor Whos. I've never seen an episode of Doctor Who, but because I spend so much time on Tumblr, just like through osmosis, I like to name almost every Doctor. And before we get started, if you could do me a quick favor, please like, subscribe, ring that bell for post notifications, follow me on all my social media, follow my Patreon for full length reactions to Hannibal. Also there's going to be a link in the description where you can for free watch my reaction to season 1 of Interview with the Vampire. And you can find full length episode reactions to Good Omens as we go along. And that way we can skip the chit chat and get straight to the good part. Current theories on the creation of the universe state that if it were created at all and didn't just start as it were unofficially, it came into being about 14 billion years ago. These dates are incorrect. I mean, I wouldn't know either way. James Usher claimed that the heaven and the earth were created on Sunday, the 21st of October, 4004 BC at 9 a.m. This too was incorrect by almost a quarter of an hour. It was created at 9.13 in the morning, which was correct. I mean, close enough. Firstly, that God does not play dice with the universe. For everyone else, it's like playing poker in a pitch dark room for infinite stakes with a dealer who won't tell you the rules and who smiles all the time. I mean, not far off. The Earth is a Libra. Oh, like a door to the lawn We need to begin earlier, just after the beginning. It starts, as it will end, with a garden, the Garden of Eden, and with an apple. Okay, I'm looking forward to CGI in the show. Okay, honestly, am I the only one that thinks that the whole apple tree was a setup? I mean, the one thing you're not supposed to touch is easily available sitting right there. And it's literally red. Humans are curious. I'm just saying, what was the long-term plan? I feel like seeing how it was the very first mistake in human history, they should get a pass. Bit of an overreaction if you ask me. First offense of anything. I can't see what's so bad about knowing the difference between good and evil anyway. Well, it must be bad. Otherwise, you wouldn't have tempted them into it. Not very subtle of the almighty. Fruit tree in the middle of a garden with a don't touch sign. I mean, why not put it on the top of a high mountain? Um, am I going to identify with Crowley? It's all part of the great plan. It's not for us to understand. Didn't you have a flaming sword? Uh... You did. It was flaming like anything. What happened to it? Lost it already, have you? Gave it away. You what? I gave it away. There are vicious animals. It's going to be cold out there, and she's expecting already. And I said, here you go, flaming sword. Don't thank me. He cares so much. He's like Prometheus. I hope I didn't do the wrong thing. Uh oh, you're an angel. I don't think you can do the wrong thing. I mean, you were trying to help. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's been bothering me. Oh, sweetie. What if I did the right thing with the whole eat the apple business? Demon can get into a lot of trouble for doing the right thing. It'd be funny if we both got it wrong, eh? If I did the good thing and you did the bad one. <laughs> I mean, less funny haha, -ha, more like funny a series of unfortunate events. Good omens. Being a narrative of certain events. He's so nice, though. Okay, titles. I'm just saying, the chemistry is already there. They're already giving me good cop, bad cop, but like with their own moral codes. And I can respect that and appreciate that. Seems like neither one of them is like blindly following instruction. Just because it's a mild night doesn't mean that the forces of evil aren't abroad. They are. They are everywhere. Okay, I understand that Crowley is a demon, but I like Crowley. This one? Two demons lurk at the edge of the graveyard. Or at least these two, I don't trust them. No, no, this character is terrifying. And I don't know why, but it's unsettling. Do you trust him? Nope. Good. It'd be a funny old world if demons went round trusting each other. What's he calling himself up here these days? Crowley. 
Crowley is a demon of taste. Comes now, the flash bastard. Don't be a hater. Wearing sunglasses even when he doesn't need them. All hail Satan. All hail Satan. Uh, hi guys. Yeah, sorry I'm late, but you know how it is on the A40. I noticed that Crowley didn't say it back. I've tempted a priest. As he walked down the street, he saw all the pretty girls in the sun. He would have been a saint. Now, within a decade, we shall have him. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> Corrupted a politician. Let him think that a tiny bribe wouldn't hurt. Within a year, we shall have him. I brought down every London area mobile phone network tonight. Yeah. No. Yes. Already? Yes. And it's up to me? Yes. You're starring well. But what if he doesn't like the script? Why me? Because I love you down there. Don't turn my words on me. Sign here. Oh no, I'm making a rule not to sign documents in my life. If I can get away with it, I'm not signing or putting my name on anything. You will receive your instructions. The moment we've been working for all these centuries is at hand. And you will be a tool of that glorious destiny. That sounds like a lot of work and a lot of pressure. What if I just want to chill? I'll, um, and vibe. be off and get it over with. Not that I want to get it over with, obviously, but I'll be popping along. Crowley was all in favor of Armageddon in general terms, but it was one thing to work to bring it about, and quite another for it to actually happen. When you release Bohemian Rhapsody on Halloween... I mean, I don't envy you. I mean, they said the end times. I expected the Antichrist. And the Bible loves to put babies in baskets. Mind if I join you? Gabriel. John Hamm. What an unexpected pleasure. Gabriel. It's been... Quite a while. Why do you consume that? You're an angel. It's sushi. It's nice. You dip it in soy sauce. And it's what humans do. And if I am going to be living here among them, tea? I do not sully the temple of my celestial body with gross matter. All right, Gabriel, that sounds a little uppity. Like you're better than humans. And I'm just saying that hubris is usually frowned upon. So get it together. So my informant suggests that the demon Crowley may be involved. Your best friend. Under observation. Without, of course, letting him know that's what you're doing. I, I do know. Yes, I've been on Earth doing this since the... Exactly. Don't tell him what his job is. Are we there yet, Arthur? Four minutes apart. The nuns said to come in when they were four to five minutes apart. I am breathing, goddammit, Ted! Why aren't you here? Honey, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just also here with the president. Hey, Harriet. I'll get back to you, honey. At some point this evening... Mrs. Dowling will arrive. You are all to ensure that they see nothing untoward. No offense to real nuns, but like the aesthetic of nuns terrifies me. It's one of the only things I'm actually scared of. The move the baby boy from them. That heights and bunnies. And give her back our master's child. Sister Mary Loquacious. Yes, excuse me, Mother Superior. I was wondering, where the other baby was going to come from. Master Crowley is on his way with our Dark Lord-to-be, Sister Mary. We do not need to know more than that. Evil nuns. We are satanic <laughs> of the chattering order of St. Beryl. And tonight is what our order was created for. If y'all don't get Valak up out of here, the whole Rosemary's baby thing is also very creepy to me. Oh, Deidre Young, contractions. Welcome to St. Beryl's. Uh, Mrs. Young, we weren't expecting you till next week. Now. Exactly now. We believe that fathers just uh, complicate the process for everybody. Uh, I, I'm not going to argue with nuns. But... Stop being so polite. It doesn't always serve you. Most of the great triumphs and tragedies of history are caused not by people being fundamentally good or fundamentally bad, but by people people being fundamentally people uh, you've left i believe that i don't know how long we've got well, i think we were getting on with it doctor mm. got it what room she in um we're in room three room three got it wasn't the antichrist supposed to go to the americans very young is in delivery room three she has just given birth to a golden haired male baby we will call baby a all right deirdre baby a harriet downing is giving birth in delivery room four 
She is having a golden-haired male baby we will call Baby B. All right. Sister Mary Loquacious is about to be handed a golden-haired male baby we will call the Adversary. <laughs> Destroyer of kings, angel of the bottomless pit, prince of this world and lord of darkness. Quite a title. It's definitely him. Don't see me holding the antichrist. Oh, Lord. Or Satan. I don't know. You look like your daddy. He doesn't. Take him up to room three. <laughs> Do you think he'll remember me when he grows up? Pray that he doesn't. Oh, oh, little baby sneeze. Little antichrist baby devil sneeze. Twins? Nobody said anything about twins. Oh, no, no, this one's yours. Which one? That one's someone else's. Whose? I've already lost track of the babies. <laughs> This father of a male boy son is all- Oh my gosh. If we're gonna talk about nature versus nurture, whichever baby ends up with them, I pray their strength. Satan, give me strength. I just said, does this show know my thoughts? The human wink is quite versatile. For example, Sister Teresa's meant- Where the hell have you been? And as far as she was concerned, Sister Mary's answering wink meant This child is the adversary, destroyer of kings, angel of the bottomless pit, prince of this world, and lord of darkness. Sister Mary, on the other hand, had thought that Sister Teresa's wink was more on the lines of Well done, that Sister Mary. Switched over the babies all by herself. And let you get on with your tea with His Royal Excellency, the American Ambassador. Y'all, y'all can't tell that he's not American. Are y'all just not paying attention at all? Very human of them. Where were you before you took up this appointment? Swindon. Like down the street, because y'all can't tell that he's not American. You must name the child. Well, we were going to name him Thaddeus. Damien's an excellent. Damien's worse. Too alliterative. Too on the nose. Warlock then. It's an old English name. A good name. <laughs> not Warlock. <laughs> Hello, Warlock. People really just be naming their babies anything. Damien. Uh, no, simple names in our family. Kane. <laughs> She's funny. I like her a little bit. I mean, there's always Adam. Do you know, Deirdre, um, I think he looks like an Adam. Hello, Adam. <laughs> that this like cosmic poker game that God is playing and the rest of us are in the dark about is a little wild. It's a little unorganized. It's a little um, random. Aziraphale, it's me. We need to talk. Yes. I assume this is about Armageddon. Yes. Crowley and Aziraphale have been meeting here for quite some time. You're sure it was the Antichrist? I should know I delivered the baby. Oh, no, delivered, delivered. No. We will win, of course. You really believe that? We better, because that's a long fight for, for who knows what. Out of interest, how many first-class composers do your lot have in heaven? Because Mozart's one of ours. Beethoven, uh, Schubert. I think this is when you separate the artist from the art. Just celestial harmonies. No more fascinating little restaurants where they know you. No more old bookshops. Crowley, you're good at placing the doubt. And by placing the doubt, I mean pointing out reality. Not very big on wine in heaven, are they, there? I'm gonna get any more nice little Chateau Neuf de Paps in heaven. I mean, if Jesus turned water into wine, I feel like there's wine in heaven. Get thee behind me, foul fiend. After you. He's adorable to a fault. The Antichrist had been on Earth for 24 hours. An angel and a demon had been drinking solidly for the last six of them. Maybe that's my guardian angel's problem. Maybe that's why my life is so hard. My guardian angel is somewhere drunk. And you know what? Good for them. Kraken. Great big bugger. It's supposed to rise up to the surface, right? Right up at the end when the sea boils. <laughs> the eyes. The bubbling, the dolphins, the whales, every turning into bully bird. Blubber? Bully bird. Blubber. Bully bird. Blubber? Baby. Blubber. Wait, fish stew. Anyway, not Anyways. their fault. And that's. <laughs> Is this a drunk history episode? Damn it. What are they putting in bananas these days? What are they putting in the bananas, though? That's a real question. When it's all over, you've got to deal with. Eternity! I can't cope with this while I'm drunk. I'm going to sober up. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh. 
okay weird but also never ending alcohol the scariest of the demons our mission is done lord haster the baby is in place and his parents are none the wiser well no need for the convent any longer then is there your orders dissolve we're what hang on a moment we did everything that was asked of us what about our y'all did everything wrong you never shut up do you we are a chattering order we say what is on our minds <laughs> Would you like to tell them that the order is dissolved? Or would you rather that they all perish in the fire? What fire? Question. If a demon destroys a satanic nunnery, isn't that a good act? Did he just do good? I feel like there's a lot of layers to this. I can't interfere with the divine plan. Well, what about diabolical plans? Well, the Antichrist has been born. But it's the upbringing that's important. It's too bad if someone made sure that I failed. See, this is why I have a love-hate relationship with loopholes. If you put it that way. You are easily persuaded. You couldn't actually object if I was thwarting you. No. Be a real feather in your wing. No wonder he was the serpent in the garden. He's really good at this. We'd be godfathers, sort of. Godfather. Happy. Well, I'll be damned. You might be. Not that bad when you get used to it. Other side of the coin. He didn't think it was funny. <laughs> I understand you need a nanny. Give it a work. They do say as you might be looking for a gardener. The young master warlock. What's that? Oh, that's brother pigeon. Brother snail. And sister slug. What kind of perfect garden? Nanny says living things are only fit to be ground under my heels, Brother Francis. <laughs> well, don't you listen to her. You listen to me. Well, that seems a little controlling. Will you sing me a lullaby, Nanny? Of course, dear. <laughs> Go to sleep and dream of pain. Doom and darkness, blood. I love this remix. The garden. A bop. Must be kind and nice to everybody and not ever destroy the earth. Don't listen to him. Listen to me. Oh my. Crowley? Yeah. I mean, if he comes into his full power, how, how do we stop him then? I'm sure it won't come to that. No, we need a better plan. That's not a plan at all, actually. That's a lack of a plan. We've done everything we can. All we can do now is wait for his birthday. The hellhound will be the key. Shows up at three on Wednesday. It is the hellhound. You've never actually mentioned a hellhound before. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're sending him a hellhound. Mm. A pad by his side. And it's the start of it all. The boy's meant to name it. If you and I have done our job properly, then he'll send it away unnamed. What if he does name it? Then you and I have lost, he'll have all his powers, and Armageddon will be days away. Okay, so that's a lot of power in a name. There must be some way of stopping it. If there was no boy, then the process would stop. Yes, but there is a boy. He's over there. Well, there is a boy now. Aziraphale. That could change. Your heart. He's trying to tell you that y'all could kill the kid. Something could happen to him. You're still not getting it, sweetie. I'm saying you could kill him. There you go. Up front and direct, and there's no way he could do that. He can't do that, and I, I'm not going to force him to. Kill him. Anything. I don't think I could. And we're not going to pressure you to. Seem to save everything. Maybe I can stop the dog. In fact, I could entertain. No, no, no. Please, no. No. I just need to get back into practice. No. He's got to play him. Do your magic act. Please. Please. I'm actually begging you. You've no idea how demeaning that. Oh. In your finger. No, it was in your ear. <laughs> David Copperfield can never. There he is. Hi. This... Oh, Lord. Okay. We'll come back to that one. Well. You see, he's my old top hat. But he's wearing that outfit, though. He got that stuff on. I had a pen and teller at my party, and I had to sign at the disco, and I got yeah. her. Girl, don't nobody care, Veruca. Chill out. Yeah, just checking in about the hellhound. He should be with you by now. Why? Has something gone wrong? Wrong. No, no. Oh, no, I see him now. Yes. What a lovely big heli hellhound. Yes. Okay. Great talking to you. No dog. No dog. Wrong boy. Wrong boy. Now y'all are getting it. The right boy was playing in the woods with his friends. The children called themselves the them. Pepper and Brian, Wensleydale, and the birthday boy, Adam. I want 
a dog. Oh, right. And your mum and dad are just going to get you a big old Rottenweiler then, Adam. I don't want a big dog. Mm -hmm. What kind of dog you can have fun with? A little dog. And I'll call him... And this is the moment, the naming. This will give it its purpose. This is the moment that sets Armageddon into motion. I think I'll call him Dog. And what, this dog's just gonna turn up? We get another dog! I love shows with dogs. I love dogs. Yeah, boy, come on. Also, this reminds me of Trixie Mattel. She named her Bird Birdie. Creativity, why use it in places that you don't have to? Am I right? I don't know. Probably, I don't know. Why did the powers of hell have to drag me into this anyway? Well, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it's because of all those memos you kept sending on. Mm -hmm. Saying how amazingly well you were doing. Is it my fault they never check up? I'm to blame, they never check up. I'm on his side. Something's changed. Oh, it's a new cologne. My barber suggests. No, no, I know what you smell like. But he knows what he smells like. I'm just saying. Would I lie to you? Obviously, you're a demon. That's what you do. What? I'm not lying. The boy, wherever he is, has the dog. He's named it. It's done. We're doomed. Well then. Welcome to the end times. Y'all, that was a good first episode. I'm interested. I'm invested. Let's get into the debrief. All right. And that concludes season one, episode one of Good Omens. And y'all, Crowley and Aziraphale, I already love them. I already love them. I already feel protective of them. And if you're not on their side, you're my enemy. So I don't care if that means Haster or Gabriel. Don't be mean to my boys, which they are. And while only one is an angel, they're both my angel babies. Crowley, I like his vibe. I like his outfits and I love his sense of humor. He is an entire mood and he's funny as crap. Aziraphale is a muffin. He's a muffin, a cinnamon roll. He needs to be protected. He's really out here just trying to do his best. And it just so happens that his own personal moral code, much like Crowley's, doesn't exactly line up with their big bosses. So now conflict is brewing. When it comes to Haster, I don't like him. I don't trust him. He kind of looks like Beverly's dad in It. The one in the original It with Tim Curry. For some reason, the makeup just reminds me of that. And I think I've said it before, but It is my favorite childhood movie. I watched it every day after school on VHS. The remake was okay. The point is, I don't trust Haster. And the creepy satanic nuns scare me on a deep level. I was attacked by a nun once. And when I say attacked, I mean startled. They didn't touch me. And they weren't mean to me, and they didn't mean to be menacing. It's just, I walked into a situation, and I wasn't expecting a nun. And then I turned, and the nun was like right here in my face. I may have screamed. I was so startled that I screamed in front of a whole bunch of coworkers. I still don't know why the nun was at my job that day, but you know what? I hope she's doing great. I hope she's having a great time. Just like, make noise. Like a cat with a bell, make noise. You can't just be popping up in full nunnery on people, on unsuspecting tax paying citizens out here just trying to live my life. And yet I'm sometimes haunted by the media I consume. With that being said, we have Warlock and Adam and an entire complex conversation about nature versus nurture. Warlock is quite literally not the antichrist. He just has like really crappy parents. And so now he's like an annoying 11 year old with bad manners. And he was rude to Aziraphale while he was doing his magic. He's putting on a show. Be appreciative, sir. And by sir, I mean little 11 year old. On the other hand, we got Adam, the Antichrist, who has two very polite and gentle parents. He has a cool set of friends with an adorable team name who are conscious about society and identity politics. And you know what? Good job, children. Keep learning, never stop. Also, my point is that he has good parents, a good social network. Now he has an adorable little pup named Dog. And back to the nuns and their already like comically iconic scene. That's the most human situation I've seen displayed. And I'm happy that they went back to explain exactly how everything got screwed up. And now it's all a mess. We truly are playing poker in the dark. 
but both Crowley and Aziraphale are close to humans, at least to the point that they appreciate everything that humanity has to offer. The great music, the great shows, the great wine, the great sushi. They're on the ground with the real people, the real people being humans. And then you got people, and by people I mean angels and demons, but then you got Gabriel, upper management, no longer in touch with the people, out here just following orders, not caring about what actually comes about. I can already feel it. I'm already gonna be on Crowley and Aziraphale's side, for the most part, because their intentions are pure. Now, are they going to experience even more confusion and hard times and disasters? Probably, yep. But guess what? We'll go through it together. I'm sold. I already like the show. And I hope that you stay with me on this journey. And before I go, if you do me a quick favor, please like, subscribe, ring that bell for post notifications, follow me on all my social media, follow my Patreon for full-length reactions to good omens as they come along, and that way I can see you next time with another one. Bye, y'all.